General Edward A. Rice, a command pilot with more than 4,000 flying hours, retired after handing over the reins for Air Education and Training Command to General Robin Rand in a change of command ceremony at Joint Base San Antonio Randolph, October 10th. On May the 31st of 1978, I, I did graduate from the United States Air Force Academy and I accepted my commission as a second lieutenant in the world's greatest Air Force. It was an Air Force that was built by giants. And I talked about one of those giants last night. For those of you who were there, Jimmy Doolittle, but there were many, many more. These were giants who were dreaming of skies to conquer, who had greatness in their vision, who had new eras in their brains. These giants of the Air Force understood that because of geography, because of our national interests, because of our national character, and indeed because of our national spirit, that the United States is and would be an air power nation. They understood that our way of life depends on the free flow and exchange of commerce around the world. That our way of life depends on the free flow and exchange of people around the world. That our way of life depends on the free flow and exchange of ideas around the world. That our Vital national interests are both domestic and international, and thus, if America was to achieve the greatness that was the promise of this nation, we must be able to project power on a global scale. That was the DNA of the first airmen of our Air Force. And that DNA still flows through the veins of every single airman today. And their vision is with us today as well. And we call it today global vigilance, global reach, and global power for America. Vigilance, reach, and power enable our nation's leaders to express our national will whenever and wherever necessary. The ability to have a three-dimensional perspective the ability to operate in three dimensions and the ability to compress time enable air power to operate in ways that other forms of military power can. We are indeed an air power nation. And the characteristics of air power are more important today than they were yesterday. And they will be more important tomorrow than they are today, based on a world that is increasingly shrinking every single day. This is part of the DNA of the Air Force. And it remains a part of the DNA that we pass on to all of the airmen that come into our Air Force today. So we are indeed an air power nation. But just as important as air power is to the national security equation, I believe there's another reason why we are an air power nation. We have some of our brothers and sisters from the United States Army here today. And if you were to ask them what the Army means to this country of ours, they would tell you that the Army is the strength of the nation. And it's hard to argue with that. I think that resonates with all of us. It's the foundation of strength of our country. If you were to ask me what Air Force means to this nation, I would tell you that the Air Force represents the spirit of our country. Because of the domains that we operate in, air, space, and cyberspace, and the freedom that they allow us, your Air Force really represents the freedom that you and I hold so dear. Your Air Force represents the limitless horizons and the limitless possibilities and opportunities that have been a part of our national character since the day that this nation was founded. Your Air Force represents our national confidence and optimism that there is no mountain so high, there is no ocean so wide that they can prevent us from achieving our destiny as a free people. Your Air Force, I believe, is indeed the spirit of this great country of ours. It, too, is part of the DNA of the Air Force. Over the past three years, I've had the great honor to command the Air Education and Training Command. 
We call this command the first command because every single airman that crosses into the blue and makes that transition from citizen to warrior passes through our gates, the first command. Our number one job is to ensure that that DNA of the Air Force is imprinted on every single airman that makes that transition. That is what we work for day in and day out. We develop the airmen that can not only win today's fight, but they can also imagine a future that doesn't exist and they can take us there. And I can tell you that that future for United, your United States Air Force is an extremely bright future. But that future won't arrive unassisted. It will arrive because exceptional airmen who are recruited, educated, and trained by this command make it so. Great airmen are made. They're not born. And that's the business of AETC. And as I spend my last few minutes here as part of this command, I must express my profound gratitude to the members of AETC for allowing, you, for allowing me to lead you as together we have shaped the airmen who have shaped the Air Force that shaped the future that is so bright. It's been 12,917 days since I graduated from the United States Air Force Academy and took my commission as a second lieutenant. And over those three and a half decades, I have often thought of those pioneers, those giants of our Air Force who were dreaming of skies to conquer, who had greatness in their vision, who had new eras in their brains. And every day, I have tried to do my best to add a small part to what they have started. As I taxi into the chocks here from my final full stop landing, and I can see the next pilot coming to take my place in the cockpit, a young second lieutenant, ready to start her own flight through life in our United States Air Force. As she comes closer, I can see in her eyes, as clearly as I can see anything, I've been able to see anything in my life, that she too is dreaming of skies to conquer. That she too has greatness in her vision. That she too has new eras in her brain. And tonight, as a retired airman, I will sleep well because she and hundreds of thousands of other airmen will be guarding our nation's borders. And yes, I'll be gone, but I can tell you I am followed by more and more and more. In an echelon, they will carry on because nothing can stop the United States Air Force. Thank you for a great ride. Blue skies, tailwinds to you all. Farewell. The General retired following a 35-year career of service and commitment to the United States Air Force. General Rice spoke about his career in the Air Force during his farewell speech. From the 502nd Air Base Wing Public Affairs Office, I'm Laura McAndrews.